I think the fundamental disagreement between myself and the Calvinists would be that God God hasn't already made the first move toward everybody. I agree with everything you said, Jordan. I, I think the revelation, the, the, the general call that goes to the whole world is clear. So the quote that you gave, which I love, um, again, he says, faith is like an empty open hand an empty open hand stretched out towards God with nothing to offer and everything to receive. So here, here's my problem, Dave, with that. And I'm not going to talk about Calvin. Um, although I think I would, I would agree with the people that might push back and say, well, he can't say that here because of the things he says elsewhere, but, but let's not go there. Let's what I, <laughs> what, what I want to know is, Okay, when when we get to the T of tulip, which you've kind of said that you don't think that's m the most beneficial way of sure. you know dealing with this, but but there is a T, there is a total depravity, yeah. and in Calvinism, and I'm not going to assume this is your version, but but that's what I'd like to find out here in Calvinism. That quote from Calvin, faith again, faith is like an empty open hand. Basically, Calvin is saying faith is is nothing it's not there's nothing in faith itself that has any intrinsic value or merit or worth as if if somebody has faith now god owes them something exactly. so one of the biggest confusions i have with calvinists is that when i say a person has the ability to believe without what john piper will say uh he'll say that if you know if somebody says that they can believe without basically god decisively causing them to exert or express that sort of, you know, power, that initial power to be saved. He said, if somebody believes that somebody can have faith, then they don't understand, you know, the, the full extent of man's depravity, something to that extent. And so my, my confusion here is how can on the one hand, Calvinism hold this idea of faith, that faith is nothing. It's not worth anything. It has no intrinsic value. But then they say, but if somebody chooses to have faith, they are earning their salvation or they're they're saving themselves. They're they're meriting salvation. You know, that's that's where it's just I don't I don't understand that because it's it feels like they're talking out of both sides of their mouth when they say yeah. that. So could you kind of explain where where do you lay in there and, and how yeah. would you kind of solve what seems to me to be somewhat of a contradiction? Yeah. So that's kind of the conversation we had the other day. I don't remember if it was comments in your website or not, or on your channel, but um, that we were not able to understand that because you were saying that Calvinists yes. claim that faith is a work. And that's one of those things that I, I heard Mike Winger talk about, and I think it was with James White. And I'm listening to both sides, and I'm listening to the arguments, and I'm thinking, no, 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 no. That's not what he's saying. So I think, I think Ephesians 2... It's probably the mm -hmm. clear passage that talks about that. So Ephesians 2, verse 8, For by grace you have been saved through faith, right? So our faith, through our faith, we're saved. We're in Christ through our faith, right? Mm -hmm. And this is not of your own doing. It is a gift of God. So I think I think the view on that is that it's the, it's the classic, who who moved first god or us right did we move towards god and then he responded or is god moving towards us and giving us the ability to respond that's what i believe i believe we are given the ability to respond because even our faith is a gift and i think that's that's as simple as it gets like faith is not a work calvinists don't believe faith is a work but we believe that if if you're responding first then you're doing something in response to something God is commanding you to do. But we believe that the faith itself is a gift. So, which is part of okay. our salvation, right? So um, that's, let me just, yeah. So there's, there's a lot in that. I think I see, I, I hear what you're saying. So it, it's, it's basically this idea that faith itself is not, it's not righteousness, right? Would you agree with that? Faith isn't exactly. itself right. righteousness. It's faith That's isn't right. itself a fulfillment of the righteous requirements of the law. Would you agree with that? That's right. Okay. So it doesn't have any meritorious value. But if we if we choose, uh, if that's even the right word to use, if we have yeah, faith, yeah, 
without God first being at the forefront, causing that faith to happen, then us having that faith becomes, what would you say there? Becomes a, 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 a good work, becomes like earning salvation. How would you word it? Well, uh, yeah, I, I, I just think I just think that if God's not the one moving our hearts first, he's not the one uh, who first causes us to even recognize the fact that we need him, then I think our faith becomes something that we do to to earn merit. And I think that's a mistake. Right. But, you know, if we're in heaven yeah. and we and we say, you know, we're here because of what we did, I think. I, you know, Alistair Begg is very clear on that. He's got a couple of fantastic sermons on this. But, you know, if it if if ever you're, um, you know, if ever you say I'm saved because of I believed or because I did this, that's that's the wrong way to look at it. Right. So, yeah, I, I, so, I have faith. Yeah. I have faith because of what he did in me. I, I don't yeah. I don't see any other way to see that, to be honest. So. So there, there's there's so much there that will take so much time probably to unpack. Yeah. Uh, uh, what I, I think, again, I think there's some, I would see from my vantage point, some um, misunderstandings one, but let me just go to kind of the main thing. Your, your thing, Calvinism's thing is, is God has to be the one to make the first move. And if, if you say man makes the first move, that's a problem. So here's, yeah. here's how I would respond to that. I, I'm confused, pretty confused about where the assumption comes from that, you know, it's that, that man has been in any sense, like left to themselves. I think the gospel and, and Romans one, you know, creation itself, where Paul will go on later to say that the heavens, you know, the heavens declare the glory of God, quoting Psalm 19, basically saying creation itself in some sense is proclaiming the gospel. It's proclaiming the good news of yeah. a good God who loves. And he'll say in Romans, nobody has an excuse. And and the only ones who, you know, the ones who are experienced the wrath of God are those who willfully suppress that truth that is in their face. Then you have Paul and Acts saying that, you know, God's desire, he's he's basically set this up. He's determined our our every person's time that they will live and their location where they are they will live in such a way that they will reach out to him and gr grasp for him. And he says, because he's not far from any of us, because it's in him that we live and move and have our being. And then, you know, lastly, just simple verses like John 3, 16, for God so loved the world and, and we love first John because he first loved us. So I just, the, the idea that, that what the Bible presents is this, this, I, this idea that God is kind of sitting off to the side with all of humanity, not, not how he hasn't moved toward everybody, but he selects a few people to make a move toward. And those are the ones who have the ability to believe what I see with all these passages and many more that I could talk about. But the ones I'm talking about here is this idea that the good news, the thing that makes Christianity unique, it's this idea that God has made the first move toward mm -hmm. the world. You know, God has taken the first step. And he has given this ability to believe. It's not as if we just are, you know, one day an unregenerate dead and sin person is like, hey, you know what? I think I'll believe in God today because I, I just feel like, you know, exerting my own strength and energy to bring myself out of death to life. It's not like that at all. It's that there is conviction. There is there is light being given. There is the 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 conscious, the the conscience, the testimony of our own, the law written on our hearts that is. I think working in every person and not exactly in the same way in the same time, but God is working. You know, Jesus says, I, I only do what I see my father do. My father is always working. And I just, so I just think the fundamental disagreement between myself and the Calvinist would be that God, God hasn't already made the first move toward everybody. And in doing so has provided the means, the ability to believe as a response. And so when I say that, you know, people believe not apart from God, you know, just basically decisively causing them to believe. Um, I'm not saying that they're doing that independent from God's first movement toward them. I think God makes the first move. Faith is a response, as I think you've already indicated. You know, faith is a response to something God has already done. We love yeah. 
because he first loved us. Yeah. So I, I agree with all of what you just said, actually. As a Calvinist, I think most Calvinists could say that too. Uh, you know, we, we talk about general revelation. I think the whole world can obviously see that there is a God. And I think even most people, if I, like I've watched a lot of Ray Comfort videos, I'm sure you know who that is. Uh, mm -hmm. Ray Comfort, when he approaches people, most people, like literally 90% or whatever, will say they do believe there's a creator for the most part. Um, and that's part, part of the general revelation. Um, are we able to choose God without God moving our hearts to actually trust in him, to actually say, I believe you died for my sins. I believe I'm guilty. You know, the thief on the cross is a perfect example of how we are to be in Christ. Is we're supposed to understand that we are guilty, understand what we deserve, understand that Christ didn't deserve what he got, and then plead for mercy. Mm -hmm. That's how we come to Christ. And that message goes out to the whole world. Whether or not people accept that or not is part of God moving in someone's heart to soften that heart so that they will accept it. Like I have a friend of mine, I don't want to talk too much about people personally, but um, I, I have a motorcycle. I go on motorcycle trips occasionally and we've spent some time together and I've read, read through chapters of Ephesians and through Romans and tried to explain this to him. And he's, he keeps telling me, Dave, I'm fine. I do good things. I'm fine. Like God loves me. I'm fine. And it's like, no, <laughs> you have to condemn yourself. You have to hu be hum uh, humble and you have to realize that you are unable. He, he's got it exactly backwards. So I agree with everything you said, Jordan. I, I think the revelation, the, the, the general call that goes to the whole world is clear, which is why men don't have any reason uh, or any excuse, right? They're mm -hmm. all responsible.